Welcome. Welcome to Tuesdays with Suzanne. And today we're going to be moving into segment three of a series that we started three weeks ago of what's yours to do? The world is in what seems like utter chaos at the moment. People are finding it internally. They're finding it in the world around them. And so, of course, the first in our series was to sit down in all the chaos and say, what's mine to do? The second in the series was last week when we worked with how to deal with the fact that we need to stay full and nourished. We need to keep our own oxygen mask on and we need to know how to let go of the tension and stress in our bodies, to let go of the pain, to let go of the tightness, to let go of the anxiety, to let go of the, the emotions that may be there. So last week was about, we called it breath in, breath out how to set up a practice that takes you through your system, filling in each moment, in each cell of who you are, but also allows you a practice of emptying whatever you no longer need, side by side, breath in, breath out. This week, we're going to be working with what I call finding your path home. And what I mean by that is, in the work that I do, the work that I teach, I teach a number of different practices for centering, grounding, staying full, staying juicy, staying where you're loving life, staying in a state where you can move through big challenges. Many of you know from reading my newsletters that my life, like everyone else's, has been full of challenge in the last six months, and it's been important for me to fine-tune my practices, the practices that feed me the most. So let's talk about what those practices might be. And you may have your own set of practices that work for you, and I'm going to bet that some of mine may also be on your list. But today we're going to think about and look at what are the practices that feed you most, and how can you use them so consistently that when things get challenging, you remember to go back to them. Okay? So, one of the things that is a practice for me, when I start to feel a lot of churning emotion inside, and it might be from seeing something on television, which I don't watch a lot of for just that reason, uh, reading something in the newspaper, hearing something on a podcast. It might also be from something going on inside me about an expectation that was not met or a painful place that I just ran up against. In any of those, when you come up against them, you want to be looking at what brings you home to clarity again so that you can move through it and not stay in a rabbit hole of grief or loss or anger or fear, anxiety. These rabbit holes are not helpful for us and they do not help us move through. They actually, people will say, oh, well, I need to feel my emotions. Well, yes. And we need to move through. Emotions naturally move through. So what practices help you move things, become aware of them, move things, and come out the other side? So my go-to practices are walking, journaling, sharing and connecting with friends, and also being still and breathing, like the practice that we did last week on Tuesdays with Suzanne. So breathing, walking, moving, dancing. Also going into an environment where it, that like there's good music or good connection with others. And I feel my whole psyche type change inside and then whew, things can open up. Those are some of mine, some of mine. So if you would, think about what yours are. And then take a moment now, if you will, let your eyes close. Let yourself sink inside and remember the last moment that you had where you were feeling a little lost or challenged, emotional. Yeah. And notice what it feels like in your body. Not your tsunami, please. But just let yourself feel what it feels like to be challenged in your body. And then take a moment and Bring to mind one of these paths home to yourself. So for me, one of my favorite things to do is throw on my walking shoes and 
out the door I go. So in my mind's eye, when I'm feeling emotional, when I'm feeling overwhelmed, when I'm feeling turning inside, I will throw on my shoes. And then right now I can imagine myself throwing on my shoes, heading out my back door around Lake Audubon. And for you, it might be walking on a beach if you live by the shore. Oh, heck, it might be walking through Midtown Manhattan if you live there doing a mountain trail. But allow yourself to imagine that particular route as your path home. And see what happens in your body. You can feel yourself taking steps, swinging your arms, noticing what's in your environment around you, whatever would really feed you most, breathing deeply, Good. And I personally start to notice right away when I'm out walking and swinging my arms that the tension starts to melt away. I don't have the answers, but it starts to melt. So see, that's how I know it's one of my paths home. Yeah. Okay. Now, take a moment now, and if sitting quietly and meditating is your path home. Take a moment and drop inside and let yourself sink back in your practice of being still, whatever that is. You might have a mantra. You might have a breathing practice like what we did last week in Tuesdays with Suzanne. You might simply sit in silence and let your thoughts just pass through, not stopping. And notice as you do this, what floats to the surface? Do things melt and spread out? Sometimes if I have, um, I'm carrying an emotion that I haven't really had the time and space to feel yet, when I sit quietly, it just bubbles right up. Yeah. And it can be any emotion. doesn't matter. I'm sitting and I'm quiet. I'm feeling my backbone and my feet on the ground. And I can let whatever it is show up and be present with it. That's a path home. That's a signal that it's a path home. However, if as you're sitting imagining yourself meditating and all you want to do is throw on your shoes and walk, that's the signal to throw on your shoes and use that path. Okay. Sometimes when I'm confused or overwhelmed, I need to journal. And I will at times wake up early morning. And I have to get up and journal. <laughs> my, my brain is just too full and it won't let me sleep any longer until I get up, put all those words on a page. So take a moment now with your eyes closed and think about what it would feel like to just journal stream of consciousness. doesn't matter how large or small, whether you're on a computer, whether you're in your journal, writing, script, printing, doesn't matter. But letting all of the thoughts and emotions just woof, download onto the page or pages. And if the, if the thought of that causes a little more relaxation in your body. It's your signal to get up and journal. Yeah. Yeah. You also, I have found that artwork of all kinds helps my insides come back into balance. Painting, sculpture, putting my hands in the dirt, yard work, where I'm really connecting to the ground. It's a path home. Helps you get clear. Remember it. Yeah. Journaling, walking, stillness, art, gardening, 
There are hundreds of paths home that each one of us have in our stable of tools when things get rough. The interesting piece, though, is that when things do get rough and murky, we need to choose a path home that will help us get clarity. So, for instance, um, while sometimes you just got to go get that ice cream in the freezer, it doesn't really help you get clarity. And it will be problematic in the long run with the way that it mucks about with your brain chemistry. <laughs> I'm not saying if you need to do it, you don't do it. But pay attention next time something comes up, not to what will just cause things to get feeling weighted down or satiated, but how can I work with this and stay with it and get clear so that I can take an action? And what's yours to do in the world? You can take that action much more clearly. Remember, we started with asking your heart, what's yours to do? And some people say, oh, well, I, I got what's mine to do, but now I'm not able to carry it. Well, these weeks have been about how to carry that forward, breathing in and breathing out committing yourself to the practices that actually feed you. And when you're fed, when you're fed, then your system becomes clearer, stronger, fuller, and the what's yours to do becomes easier to follow through with and to continue to walk with. Yes. So I invite you to check in right now and take a little inventory. What are your top five things to do, practices to practice, that will help you to find your path home when things are challenging? And when we get done, write them down. Write them down. Post them on your refrigerator. Put them in your phone. And use them. They're called practices because we're supposed to practice them regularly. Yes. Knowing how to meditate won't do you a lick of good if you're not actually meditating regularly. And if you can't meditate for some reason, pay attention to the part of you that just won't let you sit still. And maybe you need to put on your shoes and walk. Yeah. I recently had a colleague who had to spend time with a family member who has a, shall we say, a pretty severe addiction issue. My colleague is, doesn't do any drugs or alcohol. So being in a closed environment with her family member was difficult. It was difficult. And she found when she came home from that five days with this person that, that she was really working hard to get her own ground back. And we talked about, what are your paths home? And I was able to help her hold that clarity in the space for herself. And by the time we got done talking and working, she could feel it again. She was on her path home. And I wish the same for you as we all move through this world. It is so challenging right now. And enjoy. <laughs>